like to thank my host, Ben Vereen, the folks at Kraft, and the people of China for making us feel so welcome. We hope this will be the first of many magical journeys around the world. Next year, Egypt. And I've got the transportation right here. Good night, everybody. Magic of David Copperfield has been sponsored by minutes before the hour. The mysterious Orient has always been fascinating to us Westerners. It seems, though, that one of the most puzzling mysteries of the Orient just now is actually the work of a young magician from the United States. He is David Copperfield. His next television special on March 14th will feature his trip to China, where, believe it or not, he walked straight through the Great Wall of China. Now, I gather you made it to the other side since you were joining yes. us this morning. Good morning, yes, David. Yes, hello. Good to be here. What a remarkable feat. Mm. Now, you see, when we hear about something like walking through the Great Wall, or as you have done in the past, making a jet disappear, or making the Statue of Liberty disappear, we think, there's got to be some video tricks, mm. something like that. Not yeah. true, huh? No. No, not at all. In fact, uh, on this uh, walking through the Great Wall, uh, we brought a special remote control camera that sees me going in one side of the wall and then cranes over the top of the wall and sees me coming out of the other side all in one shot in front of a live audience there. So there are people gathered watching both yes. sides Thousands, of the wall. Thousands, yes. It's, it's an astonishing thing. You went to China and, and persuaded the government to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world did you pull that off? Well, uh, <laughs> it's making red tape disappear. <laughs> Literally red Diligently. tape. Diligently. Yes. Uh, and, uh, but we did it. We kind of uh, uh, did it to show that there's no boundaries between our countries, you know, the fact that uh, uh, there are no barriers between friends. I could walk through this, this object that uh, was created to keep armies out. And uh, it was quite a trip. We spent a month there. We all are interested in China. I would love to go to China. have not. So you went. Uh, we got some, some pictures of it. Tell us what you found when you went to that country. Well, um, we got to shoot in many, many different places. Uh, this is the Temple of Heaven over here. And we uh, brought 70,000 pounds of, uh, of, of illusions and equipment and lighting and so forth over there. And uh, we were allowed to shoot in places that uh, uh, haven't really been shot before. Uh, that's Tiananmen Square. I think that's pretty familiar to everybody. Now, weren't they a, a little bit nervous about Look at this. Oh. Holy cow. <laughs> floating a young uh, uh, Chinese lad. Uh, yeah, they were, uh, they were wonderful to work with. We, uh, it was kind of a cultural collaboration between our countries and introducing a lot of brand new illusions uh, over there and uh, really showing it. You know, we spent a lot of time shooting all the different uh, uh, locations and illusions. Of course, is the Great Wall of China where the big uh, illusion took place. Does it, it, do you have to sit and figure out how you're going to pull something off like this? It, it mm. seems like a terrible puzzle that you have to work on for a while. Huh? You know, I've been rehearsing this uh, on the road. We're currently on a tour all over the United States, playing every city you can imagine. And this is an illusion of, uh, I do with a steel wall on stage. Uh, you know, currently every night we do it, uh, but doing it at the Great Wall was very, very exciting and really quite challenging. Uh, has any? There are a lot of people that are involved in a trick like this. Yes. Let's just let's say it's an illusion yes. like this. Right. Ha, you have to swear everybody to secrecy. That's right. We uh, have all of the um, crew uh, who are involved and may, might see how things are done uh, sign secrecy agreements. Uh, promising they won't tell how Has it ever leaked out? Well, once, I, when we made the airplane disappear, a cameraman told his wife, you know, figured it was okay, and the wife uh, had a friend that called in a, a radio oh, call-in no. call show and t 
told exactly how the uh, the airplane illusion was done, but luckily the, the method was so ridiculous that nobody uh, really believed her. Now, see, you, you've always been interested in magic from a very, very young age, and other magicians seem to have started at a young age, too. Is there something that you find a common thread that runs through people? Well, I think uh, I you know, really wanted acceptance from, from other kids and so forth. And I really wasn't athletic or very into sports. And magic really helped me uh, with my communication skills, <laughs> just like you just <laughs> saw right now. Uh, and uh, that's really, I think, why uh, magic appeals to so many uh, young people. You are working on something that's very special called Project Magic. Mm -hmm. Yes, Project Magic is a program that uses magic as a form of therapy for people with disabilities where magicians actually go into hospitals and teach magic to patients to help them regain their dexterity and their coordination by learning sleight of hand in addition to boosting their self-esteem by giving the disabled person a skill that an able-bodied person doesn't even have and uh, for example uh, I don't know if you can get oh that's pretty tight enough you can see the rubber bands around these two fingers over here and if, if I pass my hand over Holy I'll jump cow. to those uh, two fingers over there can now, you do that one more time <laughs> yeah the um, the thing is, is that that, that will motivate someone to open and close their hand when if they've had a stroke or if they've uh, had arthritis. Uh -huh. Magicians work with occupational therapists and, you know, and uh, teach the... Uh, oh, this, is, this is a version, by the way, uh -huh. where, um, where you can actually lock it on like this. So right. it's actually so trapped. No way it can jump across. So, 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 you know, so there's no way, but if you pass your hand over, it'll jump like that. Yeah. That's absolutely astonishing. Now, but, now, the people that you work with are able to pick these up very Yes, well. they try very, very hard, and they work gradually at it, and hopefully it's a transitional tool to get them to learn how to dress again, you know, uh, if they've had trouble uh, with a stroke or arthritis, this type of thing. And it's in uh, 30 countries and uh, 500 hospitals around the world. So it's really a way of showing them that, that they can accomplish things if they put their minds to it. Absolutely. David Copperfield's special is on March 14th. We're currently on the road all over the United States. And we're always inventing new illusions. In fact, the illusion we're going to do on the show in a few minutes is an original illusion. We try to think of something completely impossible that nobody's ever seen before. A lot of your things and seem to be completely impossible. I hope so. <laughs> a lot of the, you know, illusions that we've seen on television, a lot of people say, gosh, that's just not magic. It's the magic of television that actually does that. Has television been a help to your craft or actually been a... Well, it's been a great help because just imagine in one of our television shows, more people see me than saw Houdini in his whole lifetime. So it's very important to spread the magic. But also you have to be very careful that people don't expect trick photography and think it is. So I always try to do my shows in front of a live audience or do live shows. Like, this is a live show, so nobody can kind of gimmick the tape or anything like that. Right, and you're going to show us an illusion that's never been seen before, right? Right. This okay, is, show me this It's kind now. of a variation of, of, a, of a wonderful thing. You'd like to see okay, it? Yeah, I'm going to try okay. to figure it out. <laughs> oh, you don't try to figure it out. You just try to feel the wonder. That's oh, okay. the great thing. I once had a very magical dream. 